This clip is brought to you by Mark Bell Slingshot. This gear is made for lifters by lifters. Enjoy this clip. Literally, the only thing I have is the passion in my heart, and I'm just going to fucking destroy you with it. Yeah. And like when I was in the warm up area, I would look at people and just look straight through them and be like, I just want everyone in your family to die. Like, <laughs> just like the only thing that matters is me winning this competition. And I think yeah. a lot of people misunderstood that because by the time 2013 happened, that was when I was in the best shape of my life and I went to the CrossFit Regionals and I was going to go to the games that year. That was like my shining moment where I really wanted to, you know, finally everything was going to work out for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like finally everything was going to come together. And I think I've always been such a passionate dude where it's like, I almost let the, the, my passion like get the best of me because like I remember they were judging me and they were like, no rep, no rep, no rep on this on this event that I was for sure going to win. It was my favorite event of the comp. Mm. <clears throat> Let's, uh, can you pull this up? Uh, what, how would he search for it? Just you can just go to YouTube and type in Ryan Fisher, no rep. There you go. And then um, I remember just telling the judge like, dude, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> and it was like a two minute workout, you know, like emotions are high, yeah. you know, energy's high uh, and stakes are high. Right. Like if I don't go to the games, then it's like a whole nother year of training. And like, you know, I'm, I keep putting my life on hold. I want it to be a pilot. I want to do this. I want to do all these things. Um, and I'm putting it all on hold just to, you know, be able to do well in this competition. And actually, you'll be able to see me here in this video just like freaking out, I'm like so mad because I was going to win. Jesus, you're yeah, fucking you, legs. It looked like you were already kind of yelling at him there. Yeah. So if you actually watch, like I'm not doing anything wrong. You lock, you're locking out those deadlifts. Um, my my so. arms never bend or anything, <clears throat> and you'll see a point where this the guy judging he's not even looking at me. Like he's actually he'll start looking at the other guy and no repping me without. Yeah, like right now he didn't what even look at, he didn't even look at that last. Wait, one. so this is just deadlifts that you're supposed to do? Yeah, so it's 21 reps. So it's 21 15 9 of 315 deadlifts and box jumps. Uh huh. And I'm doing like you know 27 25 like way more reps than everybody else, and because of it. It's just like, so like right here, you can see me getting really upset. And to me, you guys are hearing my story now. Like I'm, I don't have anything. I'm yeah. getting arrested, like, mm. and all these things. And that's what I see in my mind when, in this moment. I'm like, dude, my whole life is for this event right here. Mm -hmm. And you guys are taking it from me. And did I react incorrectly? Yeah. I, I think, I think I probably went a little overboard. Um, I feel like my actions, like I still feel like I was in the right in terms of what was going on like judgment wise. Mm -hmm. uh, but my reactions were obviously just really bad. But at the same time, you know, that next day they pulled me aside and they videoed this whole fucking thing. Yeah, and there's some footage of that too. Yeah. And it's like Dave Castro just being like, <clears throat> you know, he basically like humiliates me in front of everyone. It's like really, really bad. And I don't think he understood in that moment, like how much all this stuff meant to me. Yeah. And to take it one step further, it's like I go to open a gym a year after this that literally revolves around the sport that hates me. Like, you can't, like, love, you know, it's, it's almost like, you know, a girl, like, you, you, you cheat on your girlfriend or whatever, and she still loves you or, like, whatever, like, everything just comes together. Like, for me, it was like I wasn't trying to do anything, like, really, truly bad. Yeah. Like, I just, like, I was so passionate about what I was doing to the point where I, even as much as I hated what happened there and it, it felt like to me, like, my whole life was was ruined, I still opened a gym for the sport that still kind of hated me. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was because, like, that's what I'm passionate about. And I think a lot of people now, back then, it was like, oh, that's like Johnny McEnroe of CrossFit. You know, he's a fucking maniac. Uh, but now it's kind of like, dude, I remember, like, that guy, like, he's just like, yeah. He's like all in on everything. Like if he's if he's in, he's in. You know what I mean? Like if he's gonna make programming, then I'm gonna follow it. Like because that's how I am about it. Um, and when I look back now, I think that that was probably like step one that was needed for me to start refocusing my energy at a different thing, which which now is business. Yeah. And I look back and I'm like, fuck. You know, like if I had went to the CrossFit Games, I probably would have kept competing. I would have kept beating my body up. I would have loved every second of it, but I know I would not have, I would not have what I have today in terms of like a business and a career and all that stuff. And yeah. deep down inside, for me, I wanted all of that accomplishment as a prerequisite to tell people that you can listen to me and believe me. Mm -hmm. For me, it was like, it would be like Mark being like, I can't own the Slingshot brand without having squatted a thousand pounds. But like, he doesn't need to squat a thousand pounds. He could have probably squatted 800 and still had slingshot and it'd still be pretty fucking awesome. So, but for me, it was like, I really thought I needed it. 
I genuinely was like, this is the only way people are going to listen to me. Um, but I didn't need it, you know? And I look back now and it's just like, I'm happy the way things turned out, like in certain aspects. Mm -hmm. I wish I would have maybe put my sights on business a little bit sooner. But man, I appreciate so much more like what I have now. And like everything, everything that happened is just like, it's so much sweeter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you uh, frustrated in some way to be known in CrossFit kind of as a guy that, uh, you know, blew up at a, at a ref instead of like being known more as an athlete? I saw some back and forth between uh, Matt Frazier and I can't remember. Josh the, Bridges? Josh Bridges, yeah. I never actually saw that, but I heard that they actually spoke well about me is what I heard. I yeah, no, no, yeah, neither guy neither guys, guys said anything directly negative, but yeah. they're like, all I know of him is like that no rep thing. Yeah. That's all they know. Honestly, I'll take any publicity. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? If it's bad, if it's good, whatever. It's like, at least they remember me. Um, but I mean, obviously, some people might say that that's like a shitty way to look at it, but it's like, you know, if I'm not going to win the CrossFit Games... I'm going to go down as the motherfucker who tried real hard. You know what I mean? And I'm cool with that rather than getting like fourth. You probably also have one of the more <laughs> successful businesses of anyone in CrossFit, even though you didn't win the games. <laughs> yeah, which I think is cool too. And, um, you know, it's just funny now to look back and it's like of all of the hits that you can take, people say like, oh, I started this from zero and I did this and I did that. And it's like, dude, I really started from zero. And then you can go to zero and you can just go ahead and subtract like another 50%. Like I was below. Like I started a gym when everybody hated me. Mm -hmm. I started, you know, I I stole things. I lost everything. I like, I mean, I was fucking way down. Yeah. You can't make me unhappy. It's impossible, dude. Like I wake up and I'm like, this is fucking sick every day. I mm -hmm. love it so much. And anybody who knows me, like I always try to tell people like my one my one thing for everyone in life in general, like if I had to give you just advice on anything, like people are always like, oh, what's your one thing you tell like all younger people or this or that? I'm like, just be fucking unforgettable. Bring so much energy into the room that you're such a contagious fucking force. Like you are the COVID of fucking energy. You know what I mean? And people are just yeah. like, like I would, I, I'm, I would genuinely be upset if I left here and people are like, oh, how was the Ryan Fisher guy? He's like, oh, he was cool. Like, yeah. I want you to be like, dude, he was fucking, fucking dope. <laughs> yeah. And that's my goal is just be yeah. like, just be that because like, you know, opportunities will never be limited in your life if people like you. Did you ever apologize to that ref or did you ever feel there was anything necessary to apologize about? Actually, he apologized to me. Reverse. Mm -hmm. okay. I actually opened my gym and he asked to come to the first anniversary party. Yeah. And he came and apologized. So I felt wow. pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and he even said, you know, like it really wasn't like my call kind of. It was kind of like it was a weird thing where it was like, <laughs> you know, the head judge told me to kind of say no and blah, blah, blah. And I did that. And I, I'm not calling it like a conspiracy type by any means. And like you should listen to the head judge. Mm -hmm. um, but he's just like, you know, like I didn't really I didn't feel great about it. Yeah. OK. Uh, I hmm. actually am just curious, though, the explanation for why those reps were wrong, because when you watch it, they look like full reps of a deadlift. Why were they wrong in that instance? They say that I'm bouncing it. Oh, bounce some weight off the ground, perhaps. Yeah. So, okay. interestingly enough, but like it's bumper plates. <laughs> yeah. Interestingly enough, we had never used competition plates in in a, in a competition until this year. So we're all used mm. to having rubber plates, which really do bounce a lot. Mm. The, that's fair. That's that's a fair assessment. Yeah. The weird thing, though, is if you watch everybody else in my heat, right, yeah. I swear to God, I'm like one of the least bouncy bouncy type type of guys here. And in my own defense, I have. At this point in time, I am the strongest CrossFitter in the world, pound for pound. Like, I had a 600 and like 50 pound deadlift at this point, mm -hmm. and everybody else maybe max had 500 pound deadlift. Yeah, yeah. That to me was like a toy. So I'm just trying to go fast. <laughs> and to be honest, the 30 pound box jump to me is like a two story motherfucking building. So I'm just trying <laughs> to get that shit done so I can go do the box jumps. Yeah. So Pat Roger family, I hope you enjoyed this clip. We are on Discord and Reddit. We're trying to talk to you guys and build a community down there. So the links are in the bio. But remember, like, comment, subscribe, share this out with people so you can share the wealth of health. As cheesy as that fucking sounds. Peace.